All right, in this video, we're gonna add four more implication rules to our toolkit. So now we've got a set of four more moves that we can make in order to prove conclusions from premises. That gives us a total of eight implication rules. As with the first set, you need to commit these to memory and know exactly what moves they allow you to make and how to validly apply them. Let's start with simplification. This is easy. If you got a premise, and you only need one premise to use simplification, if you got a premise that is a conjunction, P and Q, well, you know that P is true. You also know that Q is true. So you can conclude from any and statement like this that either of the conjuncts are true. So for example, if you got H or D and F or G, then you could conclude H or D. That's true because they're both true. Or you could conclude F or G because they're both true. Uh, both of the conjuncts. A misapplication, if you got P and Q or if R then S, you can't just conclude P. Why? Because the main operator of this premise is not the dot. It's not a conjunction. Uh, the main operator is the wedge. This is a disjunction. It's a disjunction in one of the disjuncts is a conjunction, but you can't like use simplification just on part of a, of a premise. I mean, the whole premise has to be a conjunction if you want to get one of the conjuncts out of it. Next, the conjunction rule. This is like a complement. It's like the, the reverse almost of the simplification rule. The simplification rule lets you break apart an and statement. The conjunction rule lets you put an and statement together. So you got to know both of them and know that they're, they're complementary in that way. Remember which is which. So if you've got P and you've got Q, then you can conclude, therefore, P and Q. You can make a conjunction out of them. So if you've got G and you've got H or K, then you can conclude G and H or K. Now remember, if one of the conjuncts that you're putting together is a compound statement, you better put parentheses around that thing. Because if you leave out the parentheses or you get them mixed up, that is not valid. Make sure you put the parentheses around a compound conjunct. Or if you've got if B, then J. If L, then not F. You can put parentheses around those puppies and say if B, then J, and if L, then not F. This application, you've got S, and you've got if P, then R, and you conclude uh, S and P. Why doesn't that work? Because you're not given P, you're given um, a conditional statement. That's just the antecedent of the conditional. You can't like, you know, take out one part of a compound statement and try to apply the conjunction to it. Can't do it. Addition. Now this next pair of rules, these are, uh, uh, well, they fit together a certain way. Addition is super helpful, okay? The addition rule says, if you got a premise, any premise, P, then guess what you can do? You can conclude P or anything you want, P or Q. You can introduce a whole new simple statement, a whole new compound statement. Think about it. A disjunction says at least one of these things is true, okay? So if, if you're already given that one of the things is true, then no matter how crazy and false the other disjunction, the other disjunct is, you can make a disjunction out of them and it works. For example, uh, my name is Sasser. So let's say I, I could say, uh, if, if I had as a premise, my name is Sasser, then I could say either my name is Sasser or the moon's made out of green cheese. Now that disjunction is true. You know why? Because one of the disjuncts is true. Namely, my name is Sasser. So you can make up, like a disjunction can involve anything for that second disjunct. For example, let's say you just got S. You can make up a disjunction that says, you can conclude validly S or Q and R. Pull them out of the hat like, like rabbits. If you've got R, you can say R or if Q then trick T. Now make sure if, you're, if the disjunct that you introduce 
is a compound statement, you better keep parentheses around it. That's super important. Misapplication premise um, if P and Q then are in S. Uh, and then in the disjunction they tried to conclude to us P and Q or T. Now, what's the mistake here? Well, uh, they, they only they took part of the premise and made it a disjunction. You've got to make the whole premise a disjunction. So if you wanted to apply disjunct to, I'm sorry, if you want to apply addition to this, you'd have to put brackets around the whole conditional and then say or T. Now, addition is kind of like the opposite of another rule you already know, or it kind of pairs with it, disjunctive syllogism. Disjunctive syllogism starts with a premise that's a disjunction, an or statement, and then it negates one of the disjuncts and it gives you the other disjunct as a conclusion. So it moves from a disjunction to a disjunct as a conclusion. Addition is going in the other direction. It starts with an individual disjunct and it concludes to a disjunction statement. So addition pairs well with disjunctive syllogism, just like simplification pairs with conjunction. And now uh, the fanciest, craziest rule that we're gonna learn probably uh, of the implication rules, the constructive dilemma. This one looks like it's way too complicated to work, um, to be useful, but actually it is. It reminds me, humor me for a moment. Most of you are too young for this, but in the 1980s, there was a, a very well-known film called The Karate Kid. And um, it, anyway, the climax of the movie, The Karate Kid, uses this crazy, ridiculous-looking karate move where you pose like, like you are a, a crane, like the bird, the crane, and then you do this uh, kick thing, and it's super powerful. That's kind of like what the constructive dilemma is. It's like the crane kick of the implication rules. When you need it, it could really be powerful. So, all right, the first premise is this. The first premise is a conjunction but the two conjuncts are both conditional statements. So, if P then Q, and if R then S. The other premise is gonna be a disjunction, but it's a special disjunction. The two disjuncts are the antecedents of the two conditional statements. So you've got P or R. Now, you got those two premises, you can conclude to another disjunction, Q or S. That is, you can conclude that um, either this consequent or the other consequent must be true. Let me give you a famous and memorable illustration of a constructive dilemma concretely. This is from the 19th century philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, not a super cheerful philosopher, but he said, look, it's called the hedgehog's dilemma. Yeah. So let's say you're a hedgehog, right? You're real prickly. Some people have personalities like that. So premise one is this. Um, you know, if you get close to people, you're going to get hurt. And if you don't get close to people, you're going to be lonely. Well, you're either going to get close to people or you're not going to get close to people. That's premise two. That's the disjunction. So what's going to happen? Either you're going to get hurt or you're going to be lonely. It's kind of the human condition, people, you know? You to take your chances. Right? So if you get close to people, you're going to get hurt. If you don't get close to people, you're going to be lonely. You're going to do one or the other. So one of those other two things is going to happen. So here's the valid applications. Yeah. So let's say you had if S then Q and if M then N. Premise two, well, S or M. Therefore, Q or N. And this could get more complicated because, you know, the conditionals themselves can involve compound statements like in this one. I won't read it for you, but you can see it works the same way. Again, what went wrong here in this misapplication of it? We've got if S then not P or uh, if Q then not R. And then we've got a disjunction here, which is S or Q. Everything looks good so far. And the conclusion is 
you know, a, a disjunction of the consequence, not P or not R. What's the problem? Look, line one is a disjunction, not a conjunction. It's an or, not an and, and that makes all the difference. All right, so uh, again, our big picture strategy is when we've got a conclusion that we're supposed to try to prove, we try to find it inside the premises. And then we ask, how can I get it out? If, um, if what you're looking for, the conclusion, is a conjunct inside a conjunction, then you can use a simplification rule to jailbreak it out. If what you're looking for as a conclusion is a conjunction and you see the pieces in the premises, then you can use the conjunction rule to build the conjunction as a conclusion. If what you need is a brand new letter that's not anywhere in the premises, there's only one rule that will do that for you that allows you to introduce something totally new. That is the addition rule. You're going to have to use it. If the conclusion you need is a disjunction and you've got one of the disjuncts, um, then you can use the addition rule. But also, if the conclusion you're going for is a disjunction, you might be able to use that special karate move, the constructive dilemma. Think about it. Uh, let's do one example here. So let's say we've got a disjunction. Uh, either if A, then not C, or B. And uh, then line two is, it's not the case that D and not E. If we apply the conjunction rule to those two lines, what are we going to get? Well, you're just going to glue them together with a dot. That's what you're going to get. You've got to put brackets around each of these big compound statements. That's very important, or around the first one anyway. And then... You don't need one for this because it's already a well-formed formula. It's, it, it's all good. So that's going to give you all that. What about this? What if we're trying to prove Q or S from these two premises? What rules allow... Do you, see, do you already see a disjunction in there? No, you don't. There's no disjunction in there. But what rules allow me to conclude to a disjunction? Well, there's the addition rule, or there's the crane kick constructive dilemma. Which of these do you have the pieces for? It's the crane kick. It's this it's disjunctive dilemma because you've got a conjunction of two conditionals. Uh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a sec. You're not quite at the crane kick directly because you don't have... Um, you're, you're almost there. Okay, so, so if you had, so you've got the conjunction, but what you don't have right. Yeah, so right. So uh, you got you got this, but what you need is a disjunction of P or R. That's what you, the other piece that you need to make this constructive dilemma work. Well, how are you going to get the P or R? Excuse me. Well, you're, you're going to need uh, the P. How are you going to get the P? Where do you see the P? It's in line one, but you're going to have to break it out. Uh, so if you break out the P by using the simplification rule, and then you use the addition rule, you can say P or R, and now you can use the constructive dilemma rule. I didn't explain that as elegantly as I could have, but uh, hopefully you get the idea.